What exactly are AI agents and why is everybody talking about them? Well, in this video, I'm going to break down everything you need to know about AI agents, including what they are, how they work and why they're so important. I'll also discuss how they differ from standard LLMs and give you an example at the end of the video of how you can run and use your own AI agents locally. Oh, and by the way, this video is made possible from our sponsor NVIDIA, whose goal is to help educate people about AI agents and how you can experiment with them using NVIDIA RTX AI PCs easily using anything LLM on your own computer. We'll talk more about that later, but let's get into it. Now, AI agents are really just systems that are powered by artificial intelligence that can autonomously complete tasks, make decisions, and even adapt to new information. Think of them like proactive tools that don't just answer questions, but can actually take steps and actions to achieve a goal. Now, let's look at a quick example of a travel planning agent. Rather than just suggesting flights and hotels or places to visit, it can actually book that accommodation for us. It can book the flights. It can reschedule them if it gets delayed. It can book a hotel. It can make reservations for dinner. It has access to various tools and can actually take actions to achieve the result rather than simply recommending things or just giving us a block of text. Now, with that in mind, there are three key properties of AI agents. The first is that they're autonomous. This means they can act independently within a given scope. Number two is that they're goal oriented. They're focused on a specific outcome, like solving problems or completing specific tasks. Oftentimes you'll see agents specializing in one certain area or one certain task. Next, they are environment aware. That means that they respond to data or events from the world around them, whether online or physical. They can also store memory oftentimes so they know what you asked them to do previously and any information or context you've provided. So that's a quick brief on what AI agents are, but now let's talk about how they work. AI agents combine multiple technologies in order to operate, but here are the four main ones you need to be aware of. The first is the core AI model or the LLM. Now this is the brain of an agent and it's often a large language model like GPT or Llama 3. It handles understanding and generating language, reasoning, and the problem solving involved in the agentic capabilities. Number two is tool usage. This could be APIs, databases, various software, maybe custom written to achieve some specific task and they go beyond simply generating tasks. They can actually call out to different tools you provide to them. For example, your agent might have access to a calendar API where it can create new bookings or different appointments. Now, the third component is memory. Many agents have access to short-term memory and some even have access to long-term memory, which allow them to track what they've done in the progress of a specific task and also to adjust and adapt their behavior. Now, the last and likely most important part of an agentic system is the feedback loop. Now, this allows the agent to continuously monitor and analyze its behavior. And if something didn't work, it could actually go ahead and try again. A lot of times when you're using AI agents, they'll try multiple steps, they'll see that they didn't work and then they'll move on to something else. Now, all of these features are used to create agentic AI, but they do need capable hardware and machines like an NVIDIA RTX AI PC in order to process at the fastest speeds. Now, all of these massive advancements that we've seen in AI recently are really due to the innovation and in technology and hardware from companies like NVIDIA. And that's personally why I choose to use a 4090 in my machine so that I can mess around and train AI models locally. Now, these four components are coordinated by something known as the decision making framework. This could be something like reinforcement learning or rule based logic. But the point is this framework uses these different components and guides the agent on how to achieve a specific task. So here's a quick overview of what the decision making framework looks like because it's pretty important to understand how the agent works. The decision making framework starts by defining a goal or accepting one provided by the user. It then breaks this goal into smaller actionable tasks, just like we would as a programmer trying to solve a problem. Now the LLM that's used with the agent typically excels at reasoning and structuring information. This means they can interpret vague instructions like plan my day, and they can decompose that into subtasks such as check the calendar, review emails, and schedule a workout. Now the next step is tool and action selection. The framework will decide what tool to use or what actions to take for each subtask. For example, an AI agent may choose between searching the web, querying a database, or executing a predefined function. Now, the LLMs as a part of this agent act as the central problem solvers. They generate outputs that guide the decision making process. For example, the agent might ask the LLM, what tool should I use to check the weather? The LLM then responds, use the weather API. 
The agent would then use this tool to fetch real world data, analyze the output of that tool and see if it succeeded in that part of the task. Now the third step is the feedback loop. After executing an action, the agent evaluates whether the action brought it closer to the goal. If not, it adjusts its approach dynamically. Now the LLM can analyze the results of an action. For example, if the agent sends an email but gets an unexpected response, then the LLM will interpret that reply and suggest the next best course of action. This creates a loop of act, evaluate, and adjust, enabling the agent to refine its actions and try different approaches if the first one didn't work. Now step four is memory and context management. To make informed decisions, the agent needs to track its progress and context, what it has done, what remains, and any external changes. Now the LLMs can retrieve or update memory, like keeping track of conversations, the tasks that have been completed, or intermediate results. For example, if an agent is writing a report, the LLM will remember the sections already written and ensure consistency in the tone and facts across the document. Now step five is prioritization and conflict resolution. The framework will prioritize tasks and resolve conflicts when multiple paths or goals compete. For example, if an agent must book a flight but also ensure it fits a budget, it weighs the options to balance both constraints. Now the LLMs can evaluate and rank options using reasoning. For instance, the agent might query the LLM, should I prioritize the cheapest flight or the earliest departure? The LLM will then suggest a balanced choice based on the user preferences or the preset criteria. And step six here is integrating the reinforcement learning. Many decision-making frameworks will incorporate reinforcement learning to improve over time. The agent can get some kind of reward signal when it successfully completes tasks or achieves goals efficiently. Now, while reinforcement learning focuses on optimizing decisions, the LLMs can add some flexibility by handling tasks where predefined rules don't apply. For example, an LLM can help the agent explore creative solutions when a standard response will fail. You can make all kinds of advanced AI agents. You can do something as simple as an email bot where you type it something and it sends an email or something as advanced as a customer service agent that can actually delegate to other AI agents and have a whole team of AI agents working on a complex problem. This is a really interesting field. There's a lot to learn. And what I want to do now is actually show you an example of some real world AI agents and how you can use them yourself for free locally on your computer. Now, fortunately for us, NVIDIA is sharing about a fantastic application called Anything LLM. Now, Anything LLM allows you to run the best LLM models locally on your own computer using an NVIDIA GeForce RTX GPU. Everything from the model, the documents, the chat history is all stored locally on your own computer with no account needed, so you have complete privacy and you can run this all locally. And recently, Anything LLM actually released an AI agent community hub where users can build, deploy, test, and play around with various different AI agentic skills. And because Anything LLM is built on Llama.cpp, that means it's fully optimized to run faster and better on GeForce RTX and NVIDIA RTX GPUs. Now, personally, I've got a 4090 in my computer, but even if you don't have the highest end GPU, this is totally fine, and you can still take advantage of this application even with lower end hardware. So I encourage you to check it out. And with that said, let's hop over to the computer and look at a quick demo of this app. So I'm here on the computer and I'm gonna give you a quick demo of how anything LLM works and how you can use it to invoke different agents and mess around with them privately. Now, the important thing here is that all of this is running locally. Yes, you can connect to other providers like OpenAI. You can use API keys if you don't have a GPU or you don't have high performance on your machine. But if you have a good enough computer, you can run all of this yourself completely privately, completely locally, which I think is quite cool. Anyways, you can download this for Mac, Windows, or Linux. I've already got it installed. And as you see, local by default, no account needed and compatible with pretty much all of the operating systems. So what I'm going to do is go into my Anything LLM app. I've already downloaded it. It does take a second just because it's pretty large. It needs to install a lot of files. And the first thing we're going to do here is make a new workspace. So I'm just going to call this demo and then save. And then inside of here, you can make different threads, kind of like you would in something like ChatGPT. Anyways, what we need to do in order for this to work is we need to enable our LLM or configure our LLM. So if you go to settings, sorry, I should show that it's right here, this little kind of gear or wrench icon, then you can go to all providers, LLM, and then you can choose your LLM provider. Now we've got a bunch of different options here, right? So you can use things like OpenAI or Anthropic if you want, or you can just use anything LLM, which is what I'm going to use, where it's very easy to get set up with models like Llama 3, the Microsoft models, 
uh, Google models, IBM research, etc. So I'm just going to use Llama 3.2. The way you do this is simply click on it and click activate. And then once this is active, you can go to save changes. OK, so press save changes. And then this is automatically going to download the model for you if you don't already have it and set it up and configure it for you. Now, I already have it installed, so it just happened instantly. But for you, it will download it and you'll see it in the top right hand corner, kind of the progress of that download. Now you can configure things like your vector database, the embedder, a text splitter and chunking. And that's because you can actually upload files to this and get it to reason based on those files. This also has some agent functionality built in. So if we go here to agent skills, for example, you can see that we can have retrieval augmented generation. We can view and summarize documents, scrape websites. There's a bunch of other stuff and you can configure some of these as well. So for now, let's just mess around with the basic functionality. Then I'm going to show you how we can use something called the community hub to bring in some more advanced agents and use them locally on our computer. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go into demo and let's just start by doing something like hello world and make sure that this is able to reply to us. OK, so it seems like it's working. Now we can ask it something like, can you generate a new coding challenge for me? And let's see what we get. And there you go. We've got a quick coding challenge. Now, where this gets cool is when you start interacting with agents and files. So, for example, I can attach a file here. So let me just find one that's interesting and that it can reason based off. OK, so I've got this PDF called How to Make Money from Coding. By the way, I'll give this to you completely for free if you sign up for my newsletter, free newsletter. If you sign up, I give you this as a lead magnet. that you can do that from the link below. We send coding challenges and all kinds of stuff there. It's pretty cool, pretty valuable. Don't worry, no spam, just pure value. Anyways, point is I have this PDF and now I've embedded this file. So I just hit enter and then I kind of added this file to my system. And what I can do is now use this at symbol. So I can say at agent and I can say rag search my how to make money from coding file and summarize it for me. So if you want to use the agent capabilities, you just tag the at agent and now it's going to swap over to the agent chat and it's going to start using whatever tool is necessary. So you can see, hey, it says it's tempting to call the rag memory tool Found four additional pieces of content to help answer this question. And it does this by looking through my PDF and then pulling out all of the reasonable information or all of the relevant information. Sorry. So you can see it kind of gives me a summary of the lead magnet here. You know, mastering coding can lead to financial independence. Coding is a high demand skill, freelance tutoring, all of the different things I've got in there, a strong foundation is essential, freelancing, tutoring, offering tutorials, join a community, a bunch of stuff that I've got there. Right? There's a ton of information, but it was able to actually use that PDF running again completely locally. So I didn't have to share this on the cloud and answer the question for me. OK, sweet. So that is interesting. And I want to show you that if you press on this little button here in the workspace, you can view all of the different files that you've uploaded. So you can see I uploaded some files previously that are in here. You can just drag and drop them or you can even fetch them from a link and then you can kind of select if you want to use them in the specific workspace or not. So in this case, we have the how to make money from coding one in this workspace. So now we can reason based on that, use rag, all of that kind of stuff. If we go to data connectors, you can see that we can connect to GitHub repos, YouTube transcripts. We've got all kinds of settings here. You guys can mess around. It's not going to be an in-depth tutorial. But what I want to show you now is a new thing that anything LLM has, which is their community hub. So I'm just going to open up the web browser here and I'm going to go to hub.anythingllm.com. Now you can actually access this page directly from this uh, application. If you go to open settings, you go to community hub and then go to explore trending. You're going to see pretty much the exact same page. Now, these are a bunch of open source and community driven uh, kind of agent skills as well as system prompts and slash commands that you can bring into anything LLM and run locally. So, for example, you can generate calendar events. You can open the Slack app. Uh, they're just getting started here, so there's not too many, but you can save a file to a location. You can get the current date and time, which typically LLMs are not able to do because they don't have access to real time information. You can generate or get news from the BBC news feed all kinds of stuff, right? So if you want to bring in one of these skills, let's say we want to maybe get the date and time. We can simply press on this here and go import to anything LLM. We can copy the import ID, go back to anything LLM and then go to import item. From here, we can just paste the ID, continue with the import. Wait a second. We're just going to have to confirm that we do actually want to bring this in. And then if we want to use this tool, we just need to invoke the agent and ask it for, you know, what is the current date and time? So now that we've got that, we're just going to go to agent skills. You just got to turn these on by default. They're going to be off. So date time, I'm just going to toggle that on because we've just added that. 
And now if we go back to anything LLM, we go back to our thread, we can say, what is the current date and time? Well, we've got to make sure we ask the agent. So we're going to go at agent. What is the current date and time? Uh, let's see if it can give us that response and utilize that tool. Okay, and there we go. It's given me the current date and time by using this tool. Again, I know that doesn't sound crazy impressive. They're really just getting started with the community hub, but I wanted to make you aware of it because by the time you watch this video, there might be a ton of other agent skills that you can pull into this tool. Obviously, a lot of interesting stuff you can do. I've personally just been using this kind of like a local chat GPT because it's way faster. It's completely local, and it means that I don't need to upload everything to the internet. I don't need to share sensitive documents. If I want to, for example, analyze some of my finances or find quick information from receipts, I can drag those in into here and just analyze those, right? And I can do that safely from my own computer using my own hardware. So agents are super cool, definitely kind of the future of AI and a new trend that's popping up quite quickly. You guys have seen on my channel, I've made a bunch of videos where I've built AI agents. And in this one, I'm just talking to you about exactly how they work and how you can mess around with them on your own using something like anything LLM. And by the way, if you do want to learn more about how NVIDIA GeForce RTX PCs are powering AI and the massive advancements we've seen recently, then make sure you check out this page from the link in the description.